There we go. Sorry about that. That's okay. Sometimes you got to push all the buttons in a row. Oh, so. don't even get me started on technology. <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> yeah, it's, it really is. <laughs> Kat, I uh, have a hobby where I talk to people. Uh, normally, I set up in like public places, and we talk about things that normally people don't think they can talk about. Okay. Um, uh, my only goal is just to help people get a chance to critically think about why they hold a position, particularly something they're really motivated by or something they really believe is true. Is there anything like that for you? Do you have something that you're absolutely sure you're right about? Bernie Sanders. <laughs> I'm not very good with politics. Would you say that's the most important belief in your life? Right now, I think that this upcoming election uh, is more about humanity, and it's about, you know, we have an opportunity to make seismic change in this country, which is vastly required. Um, I was a supporter of his in the beginning, and I'm, like, back in the game. And, um, and yeah, it's more... Um, I heard Killer Mike say it beautifully when he said, why does he support Bernie Sanders? And it was because he, um, of all of the potential candidates running right now, either party, he is the only one who by far um, manifests those same policies and beliefs and wishes of Martin Luther King. Mm. So, so that's you, true. Are yeah. you saying, could, you, could we boil that down to like, I I like Bernie Sanders. I'm going to vote for Bernie Sanders. Yes. Okay. I have no problem if you like that, if you like him. But I'm wanting more something absolute, like, you know, like... On a spiritual level? No, no, not to be spiritual level. Like, I don't mind if you like... Like, so I had someone who wanted to talk about Marvel movies. <laughs> and we did a seven-hour conversation. Wow. Listing all of them from beginning to end. Because wow. I'm very passionate about Marvel movies. Okay. But at the yeah. end of the day, it's like, hey, you can like whatever you like. Right. If you like a candidate, you like a candidate. If you have something that's more absolute, like something that says, this this is red. And the other person says, no, it's not red. Let's do a test to see if it's red or not. I'll say this. Because I agree I'm... that you probably really, really like Bruce. Oh, my word. I'm like uh, one of the <laughs> most <laughs> ardent supporters. You're feeling the burn. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, yes. I was in Philadelphia when they protested. So no I was problem. one of the protesters outside. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, We're so, having a kiss? <laughs> so I saw our future. Okay, And okay. it was beautiful. Is there something about like politics that you think should exist or shouldn't exist? Something like that. That could be a bit more objective. Like, what's the one thing you want Bernie Sanders to do because you think it's the most important thing possible? Medicare for all. Medicare for all? Yes. That's, okay, okay. So you think we should have Medicare for Absolutely. everybody? Absolutely. I have a, uh, a Canadian colleague, in fact, who said, Kat, the first time I ever heard health care insurance was in the States. Okay. Everywhere else, it's called health care. Mm. Only in America is it referred to as health insurance. Okay. I'm very anti-capitalist society. Why are you for everybody having Medicare? Because er that is a right. Mm. All of our people, there is no... We want to call ourselves the richest country in the world, which you know, whatever. Uh, I don't like I don't like boasting, and I don't like the, we're the best kind of idea. I think okay. we're all in this together. Okay. <laughs> but um, and I am one of those firm believers in you know a rising tide lifts all boats. Um. So how can we possibly? Don't wave that uh, superior flag if you can look around and and, and your neighbor is mm. hungry, your neighbor is uh, sick mm. or dying, your neighbor, you know, until everybody is loved and cared for, okay. and we are at least taking care of the uh, most disenfranchised, the most vulnerable of us. Until we're caring for each and every single one of those, mm. then we're not doing what we were, what we're meant to do, which is be stewards and love one another. Okay. Do you think you'd be for it if you got taxed just a little bit more? Oh, absolutely. You'd be totally fine with that? Would you be fine if everybody got taxed just a little bit more? To, yes. In order to well, that? where do our taxes go now? The military-industrial complex. Mm. We already pay taxes. It's more about us being able to, to, to say we want a fair distribution of how our taxes are spent. Okay. The money's there. It's just it's put into it the wrong line item. I see. So you'd want someone to streamline the way how taxes are now. And yes. in the event that they aren't, you'd be totally fine with just a little bit more taxes. Absolutely. So that everybody can maintain a certain level of standard of Absolutely. health. Absolutely. Because I tell you what, you may think, oh, my family's fine. Yeah. That's very arrogant. Mm. Because what I want to tell anybody and everybody is that your life can change in the blink 
of an eye. Okay. And I know this to be true because I went through a three-year period where I got downsized from my field. Mm. I went through a divorce mm. and I was misdiagnosed with two autoimmune diseases. Hugely expensive. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I lost my health and insurance. Mm -hmm. I lost that. Mm -hmm. I almost lost my home. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can tell you within, within a year's period of time, everything changed, okay. you know, and could, if you had told me the year before, if you'd said next year, you're going to go through this, 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 I would have laughed and said, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I'm fine with this. It sounds like you have like, so well, the, the way how I manage my, my conversations is someone says something and if they say something that meets the standard, like you tell me something, I say, okay, where's my, how extraordinary is that claim? Mm -hmm. Is the evidence you're providing me meeting that standard of evidence or mm -hmm. like is the extraordinary evidence you're providing me meeting that extraordinary claim? You're saying everyone should have health care and you're willing to pay for it mm -hmm. or organize the way that we pay for it in order yes. to make that happen. Yes. Would you make it mandatory for everybody? To have Medicare for all? To have to pay that tax? Oh, yeah. Or could people opt out? People pay taxes already. I'm just... But could they opt out of specifically the Medicare tax? Like, say they're 70, oh, they're already happy with their health insurance, they don't want to pay extra money to pay Well, for if they're losses. 70, they have Medicare. Okay. So I say they're 25. Yeah, say they're 25. Say That's they're better. 25, yeah. and they're making $250,000 a year, Something and like they that. want to pay for their own I just want to pay line, myself, forget let it. Let them. They can do it? But what you oh. will find is... Uh, but they still have to pay into the tax because that's that's how you have social security. Okay. That's how you have everything. Okay. You know, mm. it's about social services. Mm. It's not about. I'm not a. I don't have the mindset of what's mine is mine mm. and how much. I, because you don't become wealthy by yourself. Okay. You don't. Okay. Other people contribute to your health, your wealth. So just make sure if they if they wanted to opt out, they could, but they'd pay taxes in some indirect way back into the system no yeah, matter what. Yeah, they'd have to pay taxes. Okay, but should, they could yeah. check some box and say, they, hey, I don't want to give money to that, but eventually the money's going to get to them, to the system anyway. Is that, what, is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that if they want to decide to pay for their own top of the line that they imagine that they will have, you know, way better coverage, blah, 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 yeah. let them pay for okay. that. Okay. But your taxes need to go to our schools, they need to go to our health, yes. all those things. Schools. Social services. But not the specific Medicare thing that no, you're talking about. No, that's part of it, is uh, what I'm saying. This is, this is what I'm bringing up. Yes. Let me be, let me be clear. Yes. I'm thinking of it as like car insurance. Um, some everyone who's on the road should have car insurance, mm -hmm. but there's some people who just choose not to. Mm -hmm. Would you make it a law that everybody has to have the health and insurance? And there is a law. Hypothetically, you have hypothetically. To, oh, hypothetically. About this Medicare system that doesn't exist yet. Would you yeah. make it such that everybody has to pay tax to at a starting at a certain age? Yes. Okay. No yes. way to opt out of it. No. It's for the society. It's for the greater good. Okay. And we have to stop. We have to stop being a capitalist society. We have to stop being a narcissistic society, which we are. We've got to get rid of all this competition that it's like, i got to beat everybody else so that I can be at the top. Sure. Because what they're finding is that that is not a sustainable economy. It is not a sustainable socioeconomic belief system. It le it. That's why you're seeing such the disparity now with the top, top, top and down here. And what's happening is we don't have... When you look at people who pay taxes, what's going on right now is the top percent are paying the least amount, okay? So we don't have a middle class anymore. When you raise taxes on the top percent, let me explain something to you. So you've got people over here that are paying the majority of the taxes, us guys, we are. And we, our quality of life, we're suffering. Most people are living paycheck to paycheck. There's not a lot of discretionary income left over. You've got these people up here paying the least amount of taxes, and they're sti they're sitting on this big stack of money, okay? Because that's really all that means. They just have more of a stack to sit on. You tax them more. What happens is they're not sta they're not sitting on such a high stack, okay. but their quality of life does not change. Let me throw something out. Is it a flat tax for everybody that's going to be paying into this? I don't this? know. I don't know. I think that's a fair answer. Yes, I don't know. Okay. There has to be a restructure of the tax system, okay. and I'm not knowledgeable enough to tell you what that should be or what that looks like. I don't have that information. Either. But it's got to be a more fair tax structure. You know, the way I feel about certain things is 
if I don't have enough information to come to a decision, I'm fine with I don't know as the right answer yes. until I get better information to yes. come to a better understanding. Yes. yes. Here's something I'm going to throw out. Going back to Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. if it turned out, this isn't the case because I know what his platform is, mm -hmm. but if it turned out he's not going to focus on Medicare for this term. Mm -hmm. He's going to do everything else that he says, but he can't do Medicare. Mm -hmm. And some other candidates said they could do the Medicare overhaul, mm -hmm. and that's what they're really going to focus on. Would that in any way reduce your confidence that Bernie Sanders is the best candidate for this? Um, it's hard for me to even fathom that because he's been talking Medicare for all for 40 and we're years. We're talking about a hypothetical situation. I'm just wondering, like, is this I am, uh, oh, oh, is so this the cornerstone of why you like Bernie Sanders? Would that reduce that any chance if he says, I actually can't do that? But here's all these other things I'm going to do. It would have to be a whole, I'd have to look at all the policies and I'd have to look at all the individuals and I would have to look at their history yeah. of how they have voted and what they have supported. You have two Democratic candidates, one can do Medicare, the other one's Bernie Sanders and he cannot. Would that reduce your appeal? Would that reduce his appeal at all? If the, way, the reason why I'm asking that is if it didn't reduce his appeal at all, maybe that's not the reason why you like Bernie Sanders very much. But if it did reduce your appeal, then you can say, yeah, that's a very important thing for me, and I'm hoping Bernie Sanders does that. Yeah, it would reduce my appeal. Okay. Because I just turned 60 years old in November. Same year. Yeah. <laughs> Black doesn't crack. <laughs> I know. I have noticed. <laughs> Sooner or later, I'm just going to go all gray hair. And yeah, but like, you still will be smooth. Oh, I appreciate it. Appreciate oh, it's going to be like, you know, <laughs> oh, you don't know the women I meet. And they're like, the women of color. And they're like older than I am. And I'm mm. like, oh, she is so beautiful. She must be like 45. Mm. No, she's older than I am. Oh, I'm wow. Like, That's not fair. All right, that so I'm glad fair. I can stay young until 45. <laughs> I'll keep that in my mind. Right. Um, what was I saying? So you said Medicare is, in fact, really the cornerstone of why you yes. are yes. Uh, attracted to the platform presented yes. by Bernie Sanders. Oh, because I just turned 60 years old. Now, I mentioned to you, I lost my job. I lost my husband, okay? I have no health care. Mm. I'm a college-educated woman. Mm. I uh, ran departments. I was an executive director of a nonprofit. Mm. And here I am at this age with no health care insurance. Mm. And I also, it's like once you are downsized, uh, I have learned this, that now they're saying 40 plus. If you are downsized from your field at 40 plus, which I was downsized at 55, mm. you will never be rehired. Or the chances of you being rehired in your, in your field at the same uh, monetary level and all that, dramatically reduced. Wow. I couldn't buy an interview. It took me two years. I had five interviews in two years. And then they, in each interview, they hired somebody younger yep. and cheaper. Yep. Yeah. So there you have it. Yeah. Welcome to America. No. So here's what I'm going to so say. So I can say, from my perspective, a bit of a grab on my end, but like, I'm, I got a PhD, Georgia Tech. Um, I've done nothing but laboratory work for yeah. a long period of time. And you, when you are ready to transition to another job, it's hard because the hiring practices are, well, we could hire a PhD, but we could get someone at a lower degree for at the same cost, lower price, and just train them up yeah. so that they're good in that one capacity that we need them for. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. so you tend to be overqualified for a lot of the roles that you want. Oh, my word. Yes. I lucked out in the position where I'm at right now, but it's one of the situations where I'm like, shouldn't be this hard. It shouldn't you know? be this hard. And every year there's a new wave of PhDs yes. in the market, bright-eyed, ready to invest in a company. So. Work 60, 70 hours a week, you yeah. know. Yeah. Exactly. You mentioned you don't like a capitalist society. Nope. Are, what's the alternative that you would prefer? Um, democratic socialist. Yeah, I get it. I you get know? it. I am more about... I'm big government doesn't scare me. You just me. want people to look out for One each another. other. Yes. A humanistic point of view. A humanistic point, point of view. But not to the point where there are some people who, for example, work really hard for their money. Like, worked really hard for it. Yeah. Have it. Yeah. Maybe have a family and just want to give them that money and, like, hey, I work for this. I should be able to do whatever I want with right, it. Right, right, right. Government knocks on the door and says, hey, we got some new tax initiatives. We're yeah. going to take some of this money. It's like, yeah. no, this yeah. is mine. Yeah. I work for it. This is my family. I'm going to give it to them. Yeah. You stay out of my business. Well, I'll tell you this, though. As a parent, you do your children a great disservice by leaving them a ton of money. <laughs> what, you, what you do is that you are feeding 
the narcissistic, elitist, entitled human being. So if that's what you want to put on this If planet, that's what you want to do with your money, you should be able to do it, don't you think? Um, like, hey, I, it's my kid. Yeah, except that we all suffer. <laughs> Look at who's in the Oval Office, you know? I, the, the reason, the, here's my, the train of thought that I have is yeah. like, uh, if it's mine, even if it's gonna affect, like, I'm not responsible for whatever another person does. Okay. I'm not responsible for the actions of another person. If some guy yeah. decided to rob a bank, I'm, yeah. I don't go to jail for that. He right. does. Right. So if I give him and he's my kid my money yeah. and he decides to be a jerk with it, yeah. that's his problem. But if yeah. he decides to do something good with it, maybe that's a good thing. But right. I'm not responsible either way and it's my money. I should do what I want. What yeah. I'm saying What's is, you know, there? whatever, if, if you have, just that that's taxed appropriately. Okay. You know? Okay. So if you're going to give a gazillion dollars... I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's a bunch. Okay. If you give a gazillion dollars to gazillion. your one kid, yes. you know, who happens to be like 12, okay? Because, uh-huh. you know, that means he's really going to be able to handle it. Anyway, yeah. if yeah. you're going to give a gazillion dollars to a child or your children or whatever, fine. But tax it appropriately. Okay. So that, you know, there is a, uh, I think, uh, I can't remember. Put the, it in like a hedge fund that can yeah, be like yeah, reciprocated yeah, yeah. into the government yeah. and you'll always have that amount, but yes. at least but give at it least as compared to the city, your blah, blah, blah. fair share of taxes. I think there's a, a reasonable aspect to what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to wonder what would convince you if you're wrong. This is the last question I ask. I'm not saying you are wrong, but what would make you wake up and be like, let me just look into this policy again? Oh, maybe these numbers don't quite add. I maybe don't, I don't even know if that's possible. I'm not even saying like you're uh, it's a hundred percent turn. I'm just saying actually it'd be better if we did this. Oh, keep this foundation, but maybe just tweak it here, and now it's perfect. Look at this, guys. Let me, oh, I'd let be open to that. Yeah, you know, I'd be open to that. One of the things that you know, what you would don't that know look me, like? What would that look? I like? don't know, but what I will tell you is that I'm the kind. I, I am one of the most ardent. Uh, vocal okay. believers in whatever I believe in. Okay. So I'm going to be the one that goes, but da 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 da. You know? uh-huh. However, mm-hmm. if you give me uh, a good argument or you go, hey, cat, you know, but what about this? I'm not one of those that's so focused and laser focused that I'm not listening to anybody else. Okay. If you share with me something, because not every person can know everything. Sure. You know, yeah. you got to listen. Yeah. I didn't know about Medicare for all forever and ever. You know, okay. I mean, how have I, how have I become where I am now and have the beliefs I have now? It's because I listen. Okay. Because I learned. I love this because normally when I talk to people, they say they're absolutely 100% confident about the thing they believe. Nothing's ever going to change their mind. And I find that to be a fairly dangerous position yes, to be always. in. Yes, Because when you're not willing to change your mind, you have like these blinders on that can just blindside you or people that you love mm-hmm. or make you unempathetic to other people's positions. Exactly. Or make you close-minded, really. Yes. How would, you, how would you grade your confidence in... Medicare for everyone from a scale from zero to 100, 100% thing. There's no way I can be wrong about this. 0%. The exact thing would on say, the other side. I would say 100%. There's no way I can be wrong on this unless somebody comes forward with a brand new thing I've never heard of that is a far better system. Okay. Right now, it is by far the best system that I can think of. It's universal health care. There's nothing wrong with saying 100%. Okay. Though... I could imagine someone who's even more confident than you and saying, I don't care if someone comes to me with a good argument or not, I'll never change my mind. And I would say that person's more convinced or more confident than you are. Well, okay, then say 90. Okay, okay. I want to go in there. So may I say one final thing? Yes, you may. I've been through such challenges over the last five years that it's been crazy. Uh, And what I ended up doing is I went to uh, Puerto Rico and volunteered. And uh, and I'm now going back. So in April, I'm leaving for Puerto Rico again. And um, They just had a hurricane over there, right? Oh, yeah, Maria. I think I left my... We're in the second year of recovery. Wow. It's horrible what's gone on there. But anyway... What I learned through all this, because you got to pay attention. You can't just whine about everything. And you can't want to jump off the bridge every day. Sure. So this is something that I noticed. It's like, how did I get through this and what did I learn? And one of the things, it's like, whatever knocks you down, heal from that. Do everything that you can do to heal. And then serve. That's what I found has worked for me. With Puerto Rico, Mm -hmm. it's like... Heal and serve, and that's the pathway to happiness. Okay, healing and serving, pathway to happiness.
chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Did Thank you enjoy you. the chat? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Not a problem. Have a good one. Good luck to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You want to take a card? I got one. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, she was fast. I didn't even see her take a card.